The Suez Canal, this strip of water, is the gateway between the East and the West. It has moved products all around the world and made headlines when it suddenly stopped in March 2021. The Ever Given ship ran aground and became wedged in the Suez Canal, preventing ships from passing through for six days. The waterway saw history's costliest traffic jam unfold. Billions of dollars were lost, as you'd expect when you block off the trade lifeline of the world. Let's take a look at the Suez Canal. Numerous attempts have been made to connect the Mediterranean Sea and the Red Sea since antiquity. Even the ancient Egyptians were interested in connecting the Nile to the Red Sea at one point. After thousands of years, a historical figure you wouldn't expect began to entertain the idea, Napoleon. Upon discovering the ancient Egyptians' plans during one expedition in 1804, the French emperor immediately got to work on plans to connect the seas. Sadly, the project ended up being another Waterloo for him, as he and his team had incorrectly gauged that the canal would require locks to function. In 1859, nearly 60 years later, the Suez Canal Company tried its hand at the gargantuan task, and construction finally began. With the combined efforts of nearly one million Egyptian laborers, construction of the much sought-after canal ended 10 years later in 1869. Unlike the Panama Canal, the Suez Canal does not utilize a system of locks to raise or lower ships passing through its waters, thanks to the fact that the Mediterranean Sea and the Red Sea's Gulf of Suez have roughly the same water level. Ships taking the 101-mile journey from Port Said to Port Suez, or vice versa, can do so largely uninterrupted. It commonly takes between 11 and 16 hours for ships to pass through the Suez Canal's two lanes. Speeds here are capped at 9 miles per hour. Keeping the traffic at this steady pace helps prevent the Suez Canal's natural banks from eroding. Not only is the Suez Canal relatively simple in design, but thanks to recent expansion efforts, larger ships are able to pass through. Ships with beams of up to 254 feet can pass through the canal with ease. Carrier ships that have up to a 66-foot draft can pass through. All other ships need to offload and transship part of their cargo. Smaller ships owned by the Suez Canal Authority can temporarily take on some of the carrier ship's precious cargo, returning it once the larger ship passes through. Further expansions are being planned for the Suez Canal, as more and more ships of increasingly larger sizes find themselves passing through. One expansion project was the new Suez Canal, which runs parallel to the original one for part of the way. After its completion, the maximum number of ships the Suez Canal could accommodate daily nearly doubled from 49 to 97. It also cut travel time through the canal by around seven hours for most ships. If the Suez Canal were to go out of commission for even a few days, it would spell disaster for the world economy. 30% of all global container traffic and subsequently 12% of all global trade passes through its waters. On a daily basis, the ships carry up to $9 billion in cargo. This figure is only expected to go higher as the Suez Canal continues to shatter its record for the number of ships passing through the strategic waterway on a given day. This strip of water is undoubtedly one of the most important routes in the world. Ships passing through save thousands of nautical miles on their journeys. Without the canal, they'd have to go all the way around the African coast, which adds 11,000 nautical miles to their route. In one way or another, we've all benefited from the Suez Canal's existence. Let's hope there are no more ever-givens in the canal's future.